when it comes to adjustability options, your M1 2017 driver is pretty much the cream of the crop. With just a simple adjustment wrench like this, you can raise or lower the loft, you can give this driver a draw or a fade bias, and you can change things like the trajectory and the spin the driver puts on the golf ball. So what we're gonna do is break it all down very simply and show you how to set up this second generation M1 driver to best suit your game. So first of all, let's look at the opening and locking mechanism of the screws. There's three screws in this driver, one for the shaft and two weights in the head here. So to open or loosen any screw, you simply place the tool into the screw and you turn it anti-clockwise to open. To tighten the screw, you do the opposite, you turn it clockwise. And the screw that uh, they use in these shafts here, when they're fully tightened, they make an audible click to let you know the sleeve is safely locked in place. And it also prevents over tightening. So here it goes. There you go. Now let's look at each screw individually. What we're gonna do is go ahead and open the shaft screw here fully to remove the head of this driver. There's quite a few twists here, but it should come off pretty easily when it's fully open and the head can be removed from the shaft. When you do that, you'll notice numbers and settings on the tip of the shaft. It's just about out now. When you separate the head, you'll notice different numbers here. These represent some of the different loft lie and face angle options you can choose. Now, tailor made use what is classed as a four degree tip adapter. And at the time of manufacture, when they assemble this driver, it's generally set to standard loft or STD loft on the shaft here. So this being 10.5 degree driver, when it's set to STD loft, lined up with this little arrow here, the loft is 10.5 degrees, the lie angle is a standard 56 degrees, and the face angle is square. And there are actually 12 different notches or movements on this sleeve here, and each one increases or decreases loft by a half or three quarters of a degree. But what happens if we reduce loft? So if we go from the standard setting and rotate all the way to this lower setting here, this effectively reduces the loft of the driver by two degrees. So this then sets up this driver effectively like an 8.5 degree driver. Now at this setting, the face is also going to be four degrees more open than normal and the lie angle is going to be a little bit more upright at 58 degrees. So it's really going to want to put a fade bias or left to right trajectory on any shots. At this setting, it'll also reduce the amount of spin the driver puts on the golf ball by about 400 RPM. Now conversely, if we rotate the shaft from standard to the higher position here, this effectively increases, if I reattach it here, it would increase the loft of this 10.5 degree driver to 12.5 degrees. In doing this, this, you also shut the face more four degrees more closed than normal. Again, the lie angle is a little bit more upright at 58 degrees, and this time you add about 400 RPM of spin to your shot. So this will really put a draw bias, a right to left bias on this driver. Now, you don't have to adjust all the way to the lower or higher settings. You can adjust incrementally bit by bit along these notches in between to make the changes more gradually and more subtly. Now if you spin the driver 180 degrees through standard you'll come to a setting here which says UPRT or upright lie. You can also reattach the driver in that setting and what that does it puts the loft back at standard again so it's 10.5 degrees again now but now the club will sit four degrees more upright so the lie angle has changed from its standard 56 degrees to its maximum now at 60 degrees so you'll find this sets the club up for a draw but it's a lot more subtle than in the higher setting that i talked about earlier again from this upright lie or uprti uh, setting, you can make uh, incremental changes, more sut subtle changes by just moving left or right there. So as well as the loft sleeve adjustment options, you also have two sliding weight rails uh, 
in the head, and this is called a T-track system. Now the standard or default position for these weights is where there's a little yellow dot in the rail here. I'll just show you here. These are the neutral settings. So if I move it off, you'll see the little yellow dot here. And these weights can be loosened or tightened in exactly the same way with the adjustment tool as before. And again, there's an audible click when fully tightened. Now the rail that runs behind the head here, parallel to the face, this contains this weight that can be loosened and moved towards the heel or the toe. So if we move the weight all the way to the heel where it says draw here, at the furthest most point, this will work to put a right to left or draw bias on your shots. If we moved the weight all the way to the toe here and secured it where it says fade, this will have the opposite effect and work to put a fade bias on your shots. And finally, there is a weight running front to back in the head here. Now, if we move this little screw forward to the low position, see it says low here, what it does is shift the center of gravity forward in the head. This will produce shots that come off the face with a little less spin and a little lower tra trajectory. You'll often find better players who strike the ball out of the center of the face very consistently. They'll choose this setting as it gets them a few extra yards on their drives. If we move this weight all the way to the high position here, what this does is it moves the center of gravity as far back as possible in the driver. So this will result in more spin being put on the ball in the strike. It will produce a higher ball flight and it will make this driver as forgiving as possible. And remember again, you can move these weights little by little. You don't have to move them all the way to the lower high setting to draw or fade setting. You can move them little by little and secure them in place to make these changes more subtly. So that is how to adjust your M1 2017 driver. It really is a remarkable piece of engineering. And it's worth your while having a little play with the different settings on the range to really appreciate the results. What it could do is it could potentially solve your hook problem, it could correct your slicer. You could end up gaining an extra 10 yards just by finding the setting that you like or having a lesson or a trackman session with your qualified PGA Pro. It's very important to remember again that you can adjust your driver at any time on the range, before or after your round, just not during it. For me for now, it's Donal out.